Welcome to DerekWeaver.com. In this video, we're going to walk you through the calibration of the W987 wheel balancer. We're going to begin with the distance arm calibration. In this demonstration, we're using a 15-inch steel automotive light truck wheel with a highway tire. If a 16-inch steel wheel is readily available, you can use that as well. From the home screen, hit the F key two times to enter the distance arm calibration. This right here shows the diameter of the wheel. We want to change that to match the wheel that we have mounted on the machine. So we hit the DIA minus key. When it shows 15, then we pull the distance gauge out. This demonstrates how to properly position the distance gauge to get accurate measurements and touch the nipple on the end of the distance gauge to the inside barrel of the wheel and hit the F key. The next step, we're not concerned with the numbers on the screen. We want to pull the distance gauge out so the scale on the distance gauge shows 150. And once we have that set, we hit the F key. The machine will beep at you and you can return the distance gauge to the home position and hit the stop key to return to the home screen. Now we'll demonstrate the wheel balancer calibration. We'll start by measuring the width of the wheel with the width caliper. This particular wheel is six inches wide. So we use the LAR button to enter the width dimension. Then to get your distance and diameter, pull the distance gauge out and press it to the bead of the wheel. The beep indicates that information has been entered into the machine and return the distance gauge to the home position. From the home screen, press the F key, the DIA plus key, and then hit the F key twice. And now you're ready for your initial spin. Lower the hood and press start to spin. Rotate the wheel to the 12 o'clock position as indicated by the beep and place the calibration weight at the 12 o'clock position on the outside of the wheel. It's important to hammer the calibration weight at exactly the 12 o'clock position and lower the hood to spin the wheel. After the spin cycle, we'll remove the calibration weight from the outside of the wheel. Rotate the wheel to the 12 o'clock position, as indicated by the beep. Now place the calibration weight at the 12 o'clock position on the inside of the wheel. And now lower the hood for the final calibration spin. Now we're going to raise the hood, remove the calibration weight, and show you how to test the machine to verify the calibration is accurate. The wheel data is already entered, so we're going to shut the hood to begin a spin cycle and we'll walk you through balancing the wheel and testing. As you can see, the machine is asking for three quarters of an ounce on the inside of the wheel, so we rotate the wheel to the 12 o'clock position and hammer the weight on at 12 o'clock on the inside. As you can see on the screen, the machine is asking for two ounces to be placed on the outside of the wheel. So we rotate the wheel until the machine beeps. And we hammer the weight on at the 12 o'clock position on the outside of the wheel. And lower the hood to spin the wheel. The screen shows zeros, which indicates the wheel is balanced. At this point, we're going to randomly add a two ounce weight to the inside bead of the wheel and re-spin to ensure that the machine recognizes the added two ounces of imbalanced weight. The two ounce weight can be added anywhere on the inside of the wheel. And now we'll shut the hood and spin. After the spin, the machine should ask for two ounces of weight on the inside of the wheel, as it does. Now rotate the wheel until the machine beeps. At this point, the two ounce weight should be at the six o'clock position as shown here. 
After you verify the weight location, remove the two ounce weight. Now we're adding the two ounce weight to the outside of the wheel. It can be placed anywhere around the wheel. And now we'll shut the hood and spin. After the spin, the machine should show two ounces of imbalance as it does. And that two ounce weight should be at the six o'clock position as shown here. And now you can remove your two ounces of imbalance weight. Once you've completed the automotive calibration and test, you're ready to use the W987 to balance light truck and automotive wheels. If you have the motorcycle kit and wish to balance motorcycle wheels, you will need to perform the motorcycle calibration after the automotive calibration is complete. We will demonstrate the motorcycle calibration next. The first step in the motorcycle calibration procedure is mounting an unbalanced wheel. Most motorcycle wheels require two cones for mounting. We place the first cone on, carefully slide the wheel onto the shaft, install your second cone, and then we use spacers to take up the excess shaft space and then finishing with the thumb screw and tighten the assembly. Now rotate the clamp assembly to, 12, to the 12 o'clock position and rotate the valve stem to the 12 o'clock position and release the clamp. Rotate the wheel and release the second clamp. From the home screen, press the vehicle button until the motorcycle icon appears, shown here, and press the mode button until you get to the static mode, which is indicated by STA, shown here and here. To install the distance gauge extension, place the open end of the distance gauge extension over the end of the distance gauge. To get accurate distance and diameter measurements, it's important that the flat part of the distance gauge press against the edge of the wheel and the nipple press against the inside of the wheel. Get your distance and diameter by placing the distance gauge against the beat of the wheel. Use the width caliper to measure the width of the wheel. Enter the width dimension of the wheel. The wheel we're using is four and a half inches. And now we'll begin the calibration process. Press the F key, it'll show Cal Rule. Press the DIA plus key, it'll show Cal Cal. Press the F key, it'll show Cal Car. Press the DIA plus key, it'll show Cal MOT. Press the F key, and at this point we lower the hood and press the start button to initiate a spin cycle. After the initial calibration spin, release the wheel clamp that's in line with the valve stem. Rotate the wheel assembly so the valve stem is at the 6 o'clock position. Release the remaining wheel clamp. Rotate the wheel until the valve stem is at the 12 o'clock position. Making sure not to move the wheel assembly. Engage the second wheel clamp. And now shut the hood for the second calibration spin. Once you've completed the motorcycle calibration, you're ready to use the 987 in motorcycle mode. To return to auto truck use, you will need to repeat the arm and automotive calibration. Thank you for using DerekWeaver.com for all your automotive equipment needs.